And it's 23 minutes after the hour, exactly according to the atomic clock. And that means it's time for Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes secret show to begin. That's a little hello to Nathan Oakley and D-I-T-R-H with that number 23. I'm Patricia Steer and holding up the magnifying glass is Mark Sargent. Hey, Mark. I am marveling at your beauty, Patricia. Thank Looking you. at you with a magnifying you later glass. later for saying that. So you're not wearing your glasses with no lenses, but you're using a magnifying glass and kind of keeping the theme going? Uh, yeah, something like that. Actually, I didn't feel... I'm not 100%, as you know. I'm only at about 77%. Yeah, well. I noticed yeah. that on your show last night on Truth Frequency Radio. Yeah, I was not. I'm what, still... What is it? What's wrong? I don't know. I'm still... I'm a little achy, but that's okay. I, I you know, the show must go on. How, how much of... I... If you want to be an example, you get to power through these things. Yeah, so. very true. In order to exhibit leadership, you exactly. have to never you let can't... them see you sweat. <laughs> well, yeah. I am going to whine a little bit, though. It's like I, I don't feel 100%. It's okay. Oh. As long yeah, as you yeah. can't tell, as long as you're looking at me, you, you, you'd be like, man, you look kind of tired. What's happening with you? You look totally fine. You look nothing like you did right before you had your appendix yanked out. Well, okay. Thank you for saying that. That was close to death pretty much again yeah so the number 23 is starting at 23 minutes after the hour i am notoriously late but we waited until it was 23 after and you know the jim carrey movie the number 23 that is a really good movie and the number 23 comes up a lot in all of our lives for some strange reason and also the number 11 when you look at a clock it's 11 11 a lot for a lot of us and i'm sure it's just coinkadink but it also could be something else since this world seems to be run on numbers but 23 is in your email address. And how'd you work that out? Uh, that was a complete accident. I I got that email address 20, about 23, 23 years, years ago. 23 years ago. Oh, no. Actually, which is weird. Uh, and it was assigned randomly through Comcast. Because back then, I was like, all right, well, I'll just... You I was looking accepted for a randomly assigned email address? Well, lots of people do. I know. You know if, no if, one if created you're, well, Joe, because I was looking for nine five one seven. I mean, everybody. On. Well, everybody. As long people will settle as long as they get the first letters, you know. So I had M Sergeant, that was just fine. Unfortunately, what I didn't realize settle. is a lot of people because of military sergeants. Okay, okay. They, uh, I was the twenty third in line, so I was like, all right, well, I'll take it. Twenty thing, and then later it's like, why did you pick that number? It's like, uh, I didn't. It was well, Comcast. Some things just happen that that somebody could say are conspiracy-ish, but they're not. Mm. Um, I mean, yeah, but only later, I, I didn't even realize it. You're, uh, sometimes as intelligent as I am, I am still a dumb blonde because <laughs> stuff blow, things will blow right by me. I watched the Jim Carrey movie, number 23. Yes. Didn't, still didn't realize until several years later that my email address had 23 in it. It's like, oh yeah, wow. And I did not know until just a few years ago that my last name was an anagram for strange hmm, and strange Real, world is your show yeah which yeah, which yeah the only in fact it's one of the only words you can spell with my last name is strange. you're not a dumb blonde by far although you were blonde well. blonde, you still haven't passed your duh test <laughs> funny yeah but I see what you um, did there. Can you check our live chat? For some reason, I'm used, looking at it on my phone, and it says that the show's not on the air. So no, everybody's. I know I'm having issues. I'm no, having everybody's. Issues. That's a cool blue mic mark. Oh yeah, cool because it's a blue. Yeah, actually, it, says it is blue, blue on it. It's a relative of this mic. This one also says blue on it. Yeah, they're like cousins. Although yours yeah. is fancier than mine. Mine's more mobile. I could do this. Mine's more. Uh, mine's older. Just like I'm older than you. I had this longer than you did. All right. I'm how going does to... how does thirty nine equal older than me? That's just beyond. Uh, yeah. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. <laughs> um, I'm going to work on figuring out why I can't see the live chat on my phone because I can mystery. see it on mine. I know, but I need to see it. Something weird. Right. I'm going to reboot my phone. You know, um, which doesn't mean throw it down in the ground and pick it back up again. Sometimes that does work with certain things, though. But mm -hmm. in this case, off and on is what's going to happen. And uh, let's talk about ad. Apocalypse. The ad apocalypse. Okay, so if anybody knows what's going on, I'm going to put my mic down for one second. You guys will hopefully you'll still hear me. Just yeah, fine. I can hear you. I'm still okay. working on this. The um, if you type in flat Earth and you sort by upload date, you'll notice the numbers have changed recently. And as we our numbers have gone from 19.3 to 17.5, and it has nothing to do with flat Earth at all. It is all because of the adpocalypse. And that was triggered in some way by that 
event at a certain city in Nevada, probably. Maybe, maybe. I mean, I mean, they had to. Say well, they had to think it up with something. Up, pretty much, I'm exaggerating. So, without your video getting flagged. The story goes a little, a little something like this. Gather round, kids. So, a long time ago, a long time ago, when in dinosaurs the, didn't roam the earth, <laughs> <laughs> when when YouTube was was all powerful, uh, they could basically use any sponsor ads on any video they wanted, and the sponsors just didn't care that much. It was like, okay, we'll put a uh, you know, we'll link up this Chevy ad or this Ford ad or Coke and Pepsi or whatever it is, and we'll put it on just about any video we see fit because who's actually noticing? what videos get attached to what ads. Well, after a while, when people started realizing, and by that I mean ad execs, you know, the marketing people for these big companies, that some of the videos that their companies were being tied to were not so friendly, they started getting a little leery about it. You remember how I used to say, uh, and I know this isn't about the videos themselves, it's about the comment section. I said, if you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. But I changed that to where if you can't say something nice, you're probably in the YouTube forums. There's a lot of dark videos out there, as we really? know. Really? There's, there, there's there, videos with people actually hating each other? There, there's some things? hateful videos no, on YouTube. No, no, no. no, no. It's, it's I refuse true. to believe no, it. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not telling okay. tales out of I'm school. Gonna, I'm going to let this you talk is, about it, but I still don't. I'm telling right. well, myself if there's actual hit pieces on YouTube about well, other people. I, I mean, lives. yes. Uh, even I would love to make a, a piece <laughs> of self-loathing on me. But no, there's a lot of dark. <laughs> Let's make it pieces on each other. Let's do it. <laughs> sure. We know each other's weaknesses. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> really, really brutal. <laughs> so it'd be awful. So there's a lot of dark rabbit holes in YouTube, and the sponsors started grumbling about it. And YouTube, figuring that they were as big as they were, said, "Eh, what are they going to do? Leave? We're the only game in town, really." And the corporations eventually said, "Yeah, you know what? We're gonna leave." So that's what they started doing in droves and YouTube was losing a lot of money. Most people don't know. And there's plenty of videos you can watch about this. Most of them are titled YouTube censorship. If you want to look up the videos recently, just set the filter to this year. So this happened this year, only this year. And it was, this was all happening behind the scenes. Nobody else was, was kind of privy to what was going on here, except the corporations and YouTube. Then the corporations pulled out and the YouTube didn't know what to do. And remember they were also acquired by Google. So now they're this giant, humongous corporation, but they still, YouTube wasn't making any money. In fact, YouTube's never really made any money. It's just this giant vehicle for data and information and content. So they had to figure out a way to get the corporate sponsors back because like banning all hate videos, that's not gonna help you. You know, is, you know, doing this 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 huge sweep of, of killing off videos, that's not going to help. So working with the corporations, they came up with an idea, which was as follows. Let's make it to where videos we deem unpleasant, mm. and I'm going to actually use that word unpleasant because that's really what it comes down to now. Uh, they're not going to get banned, but you're not going to make any nickels off of them. Mm -hmm. Demonetize. Demonetize. There needs well, to be a stamp, you know, like a rubber stamp. Boom, with an echo. And, and it's, not, it's not even demonetized anymore. What it is, it's a brand new setting. So what they did was they went behind the scenes fairly recently and they started demonetizing videos without telling people they were doing it. And so people's revenue streams, you know, people who were making money off of videos, uh, like video game, video game people did a lot of it. And it, you, you can imagine, there's a whole bunch of people making videos off of other things. I dare say that in Flat Earth, there's not really that many people making that much money on YouTube videos. No, 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 no. And so this, this doesn't have anything to do with us. The, but, we don't have those quadrillion subscribers that, no. you know, other people do. But we were lumped up in it, you know, because there's lots of people. Look, let's face it. There's people that make videos. You, you've seen them. People that will mirror content from Flat Earth videos and make the nickels. You know, and yeah, like what want... happened with uh, the Flat Earth Clues. Yeah, but I don't actually those weren't banned or, you know, taken. Off. Anyway, the point was behind the scenes, they started demonetizing stuff and not telling anybody. And so people's revenue streams were going down and down and down and down. And then in the meantime, they that YouTube had to build in a little thing into their creator studio to let people know, because eventually, you know, people start writing in people start. I mean, a lot of people, a lot of content creators start writing going, what the hell? You know, what happened to my revenue stream? I, I'm not doing anything different. So all of a sudden, 
just recently, as a matter of fact, just within the last few weeks, they released a brand new thing under videos, under the video manager called... And it's called, We Have You Under Our Thumb, right? That's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> it's called, so down below, in fact, it's the list. So you can say, view is most viewed, public, unlisted, private draft, monetized, not monetized, and then a brand new section called limited or no ads mm. which is the yellow flag it's not it's red the, flagged they put you in the corner and put a dunce cap on you <laughs> pretty much it is it is basically means is you are going to get the lowest of the low advertisers if any and the the, the great video i don't know if you watched it uh it was a british guy who makes a lot of uh, videos and he made a great comparison which was and i didn't re realize this was the uh, WWE, the World Wrestler, World World Wrestling, right? You know, I heard that VB Validation Boy once said everything in life can all be talked about when using professional wrestling as an example. <laughs> so, well, here this, we go. This was actually relevant because a lot of people don't know. I, I tend to say that a lot, but it's true. A lot of people don't know that World Wrestling Federation sponsors are not your heavy hitting sponsors. You're not going to get a lot of the big sponsors. You're going to get like the shake weight. Like, yeah, yeah. Into knife. <laughs> You're not going to get a lot <laughs> of Ken Summers that leg thing, that leg exercise. Thigh master. Uh, exactly. Cis <laughs> Cisco and uh, uh, Amazon and you know big, big. I'm sorry, big corporations are not going to be backing World Wrestling because, and I will be kind here. They consider the viewing demographic of wrestling to be rather lowbrow, mm -hmm. and so because of that, only you know the 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 not so the bottom of the barrel but not the not the best sponsors in the world for world wrestling federation which is sort of untrue because there's people who watch wrestling that are very intelligent they watch it to be amused and then there's the people who actually think it's real well yeah category. There's, there's those people well that's the point you know there's still a lot of people that believe world wrestling federation and you know all the versions of it are legit hashtag people who believe cnn is legit believe it or not yeah well yes <laughs> all right so because of that, they, they took that policy and they implemented implemented it into YouTube. But now what they've done is they've created a scenario where you're basically guilty until you prove yourself innocent. So what they've done is they've said any video that's even remotely controversial, we're going to flag as not suitable for most advertisers. And if you want to request a review, you can. But that's it. Basically, you, you've added a whole other step to people that are they're creating content and uh, content and trying to get YouTube nickels. And so, then there's been tons of examples out there. People with this new system where they have hundreds of videos that are are yellow flagged, and they have to go in and request content mm -hmm. changes for all of them. And this filter is not kind. And I'm not. And and I'll give you the the perfect example. You you probably heard me say this when I did that silly little funny Jerry Seinfeld video for his movie comedian, and I took the narrative from that from that famous voiceover actor, and I put it into a made it into a flat Earth video. It was only sixty seconds long. That got flagged, and you're probably saying, why would that get flagged? And and, and in fact. Uh, um, I sent it to people. I go, tell me, you know, tell me how you know it is. And that's because of the combination of words that was used. When the guy goes, one girl, two girls, now more than ever, right? Oh, so very, they thought it was sexual, although it wasn't. Yeah, yeah. Very subtle innuendo by Jerry Seinfeld. I mean, so subtle, a lot of people wouldn't even get it. It's so right. all subliminal. That filter picked it up. And it's like, holy smokes, if that filter picks this up, it is going to be tough sledding. So why is that filter picking up things that aren't even really problematic, but allows people to make horrible hit pieces about people filled head to toe with lies? Well, <laughs> because there's only so far you can go. Remember, if you're in a room with corporations, you're trying right. to come up with way, you know, what oh, videos yeah. do you, let's say you're the president of Coca-Cola. Right. What, what videos I quit, do you not but... want to be associated with? And it's like, okay, I don't want to be associated with, uh, uh, racial discrimination, mm -hmm. gay discrimination, mm -hmm. any discrimination. Yes. Uh, oh, 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 but then you run into other things or anything that's sexually suggestive. I don't want to be that tight. I mean, basically, the AOL America Online rules now apply. If you can't see your video being on Nickelodeon, <laughs> exactly, you are gonna have a really really tough time. But but there's a there's a flip side to that coin, which is for example, uh, let's say okay, I don't want any videos that show 
drug abuse. Mm-hmm. You know, you know how like okay, being Halloween's coming up. The, I don't, I don't want to be tied to a video that wants to show you how to make a great bong out of your pumpkin, right? Okay, I get that. But, but the you same, know where we can find a link to that? <laughs> I can put it in the description. Box. Exactly. <laughs> but at the same time, pe- but documentaries and pieces on drug addiction are also not allowed. Oh, that's crazy. Same thing goes with the sexually suggestive and sexual abuse. There's too much verb because remember, we're not talking about people. Here's the difference. I got I got to clarify this. So for it's you guys. all computer. This is an algorithm. Uh-huh. This is not people looking over the videos. This is just a keyword search combination nightmare that's doing this. And then only after you complain, they'll have a, a human being get involved and look at it and go, "All right, it's not so nothing bad. wrong here." Yeah. Um, D Marble is in our chat and he said he's had a couple of videos yellow flagged. I know I have. One of my last interview videos was with Rand Campbell of the channel Flat Out Elected. He's a Christian channel and right. nothing we discussed there was untoward, not just because he's Christian. It just really wasn't. It got flagged. Uh, the the videos you and I did, a couple videos we did on that uh, on that city in Las Vegas, they didn't get flagged. And that city in Las Vegas? I mean, excuse me, that That city that isn't Las Vegas, Las Vegas, L-A-S-V-E-G-A-S, Las Vegas. I I don't even, you know, no, that, okay, Las Vegas, I'll say it. And, you know, it's not a problem to say it, but yet, you know, it seemed as if a lot of people's videos for even just mentioning the word would get flagged. But uh, a promo that is on my channel that was for our secret show, which showed um, a TV show from a long time ago in the 60s called The Avengers, that got flagged. There was nothing in that video, nothing sexual, nothing uh, racist, nothing religious, nothing even involving Flat Earth. It's it's an old TV sitcom uh, that got uh, demonetized. Now, my monetization is so minimal, the amount of money I make, it doesn't really make a difference. I mean, yeah, yet, let's- it, it's, When it's done incorrectly, um, this filtering thing that they've got, you laugh at it. You're like, are you serious? Yeah, it's really? let's let's call this what it is. It is not a banning system. Right. It is strictly just to get the big player advertisers back into YouTube, and your video is not going to get banned. However, if you were counting, there are a lot of people out there, not necessarily in the flat earth community. So we lost about ten percent. Not, not that the videos were deleted, but we lost about 10% because these videos are also not going to be featured. They're not going to be recommended. Okay, so if they're not able to be monetized, they don't get featured or recommended. I was told that when I started my channel. They said, the person who told me, advised me, said, monetize right away. And I'm like, well, I'm not really here to make money. If you monetize, you're going to be up put up higher in the rankings and you yes. might be featured and uh, more people will get to see your videos. And I said, okay, and did it. And that's that. So. Yeah. Yeah. I scratch your back and YouTube hopefully doesn't. Yeah, YouTube wants you to monetize. Beat me over know? the head. Yeah. And, and YouTube, look, they can do whatever they want. Technically there's, you know, there's a lot of creators out there that say, Hey, I helped build YouTube because, you know, I created this great channel and I have millions and millions and millions of hits. We're but, nothing to them. We're like a speck of dust. Well, it's, it's not individual just individual person. It's not just that, but they made money other off of other people's contents. Mm-hmm. So like, for example, here, here's a great, you know, like all the people that used to, the people that got hurt the most from this whole ad apocalypse were the video game reviewers really yeah so anyone that would make a video and they, the thing is they made a lot of money off of it so they would play they would buy a copy of grand theft auto mm-hmm. and they would play it and then they would show people what to do and do all this fun stuff and since a lot of people bought grand theft auto they had huge big subscriber bases and they would make quite a bit of money well here's the thing Grand Theft Auto is now considered too violent a game for most advertisers. In fact, wow. the, uh, along with, look at the, like some of the, I had a very, out of the 800 videos that I have, I think I had four that were flagged. I had eight, and, but I, I uh, wrote in for all of them and they reviewed all of them manually and most of them have been lifted. But yeah. continue, continue. Uh, two of them were actually the chat from the chat raid scenarios that we did with IPS back in the day. Because it was some video game manual. It was because we were going after video games. One was Friday the 13th and the other was Resident Evil. Both are now considered too violent a game for most advertisers. So what it has done, not a huge loss in my opinion, it is anyone that wanted to make a living 
uh, you know, a lot of kids have aspirations like, oh, I'm going to be like PewDiePie. You know, I'm going to, you know, go in and, and make all these videos off of off of content that I, you know, they had nothing to do with the making of the game. They were just playing the game and getting paid for it. They don't get to do that anymore. They can review it. I mean, yeah, they can request reviews all they want, but they're going to be, it's, a, it's an uphill battle now for them. Hmm. I just so. want my videos to be seen. Therefore, monetizing makes them supposedly get seen more, or the possibility at least exists. So, luckily for us, the wheat and the chaff. I think it's gonna. It's gonna. Yeah, I'm not worried about it at all. Zero. It's gonna I, be fine. If it all got demonetized, I would still be here doing stuff because when I was. When I'm looking at like the top 50 videos, those haven't changed. Good, good. You know, th these are all the people that were just making token videos. You know, it's like, oh, well, Flat Earth seems trendy. I'm going to do a Flat Earth video. Maybe I can yeah. pick up a few, few nickels. Sometimes when I uh, search Flat Earth and I do a couple times a day and then just go through what there is, when you get to the very bottom of the list, I've been seeing some, well, for a while there was porn. Hopefully it's not saying porn's not going to get it flagged by YouTube. But uh, there was porn uh, videos on at least the thumbnail that had Flat Earth in their descriptions for some reason. But also lately I've noticed that it's some um, beauty channels, the channels that do makeup review, um, beauty product reviews and makeup tutorials. They've been putting Flat Earth in the title as they've done like unboxings of beauty products companies have sent them. One of the women women i wrote in her uh comment section i said are you a flat earther because she's put flat earth in the description box of an unboxing of beauty products right it's just weird it, the video had nothing to do with flat earth but i get there i watched the whole thing just to like see if she said flat earth once no there are some high-end or more high-end professional flat earth or i'm sorry pro professional youtubers that look just look for trends right and whatever's trending they're gonna right. that's called spam if i put a bunch of tags within the video that I'm doing that have nothing to do with the actual video or nothing to do with my channel that were just trendy. Like, let's say Justin Bieber did something today. Not that I'd ever know. But if I put Justin Bieber in as a tag and we never talked about Justin Bieber, the video could be flagged for a spam or misleading content. So you have to be careful if you put flat earth into things that are not flat earth at all or not flat earth criticisms. Also, real quick, and we won't dwell on this too much longer. Uh, there is a brand new, if I'm not Sheriff mistaken, a brand new what? Sheriff this, in town. New sheriff in town. <laughs> yeah. The um, brand new category, which is called religious controversial. And I mentioned this for any Christian flat earthers out there. If you're going to make videos, be careful in the titles because you can get also smacked with this new filter that's out there. The algorithm, you know, again, if you don't care about getting money, hey, fine. You know, if, if you're not making, monetizing the channel, you're, you're totally fine. Uh, also, uh, Robbie D mentioned to me that uh, he got flagged because he had the word shocking in the title of the video. Apparently, that's something that they're kind of oh, frowning because... against because it sounds too tabloid. But also, it might sound like somebody's getting shocked with electricity. Maybe. It sounds like violence or something. But I think it's mostly just bad journalism type thing. You know, okay, like, makes sense. Yes. You know, uh, shocking. Uh, uh, shocking. George, George Clooney found with <laughs> Mark Sargent. With a man. Exactly. <laughs> Probably wouldn't be shocking to many. <laughs> wouldn't be, no. Uh -huh. um, I do have to make a correction. And Nathan Oakley has said that, no, it's not spam. It's tag loading. Tag loading is when you put a bunch of tags that are unrelated to your content or your channel in there to try to get more hits. So thank you, Nathan Oakley. And one one more last, I'm sorry, last shot on this. Uh, just to give you guys an example, I still have one video out there, one that is still under review. Mm. And that was from early last year. And you probably don't remember it. It was a song made for Jerem called uh, Jerenism Nuke the Sky by Frode Loken. I was remember. Like a heavy metal song. Yes. That that was flagged. Because of the nuke part? Nuke, yeah, because of the nuke part. Wow. Yeah. Uh, that's weird. Yeah. Um, so I have no doubt it's going to be overturned, but it's not a high priority for them to be overturned. Oh, that was the other thing. If they're going to overturn a video, they yeah. said, look, you won't even be near the top of the list if you if your video doesn't get a thousand hits in a week. Right. Like like recently. If it didn't yeah. get a thousand hits in a week, then you're Sorry. probably not going to. Um, anyway. I've done an interview with Russian vids and I've also uh, done another interview with Russian vids on a, on a uh, podcast I used to do with DITRH called Truth is Stranger Than Lies. 
And so I've interviewed essentially Russian vids twice. And both of those videos were demonetized, yellow flagged, uh, because I, I, and also an interview I did with PK with DITRH under the truth is stranger than lies uh, banner, I guess. And that is in my playlist on my channel. But both of those were demonetized. And I'll tell you the reason right now, those names, PK Boston and Russian vids, I'm betting YouTube just has red flags on their heads. You know, if any oh, yeah, of those yeah, guys yeah. put out yeah. gets yellow, excuse me, yellow flagged. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. The, in fact, the YouTube, that's not an out. Well, it is partially an algorithm. Well, YouTube can blacklist people. No question. Yeah. I've seen many an occasion. Uh, not a lot of flat earthers, but where where Russian those did for sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's some people once you're blacklisted and I don't mean blacklisted to where your video, you know, because they're not going to just automatically delete your video, but they'll immediately immediately any video you make is automatically demonetized. Nope, not going to gain nickels on it, hoping that they can kind of push you out if that's what you're gunning for. So, uh, DITRH says he got videos taken down for tag loading. And mm -hmm. that would be as if, you know, like a, the hot story today was, I don't know, Kim Kardashian, if you were doing a video on how the sun moves away from the earth and doesn't set, uh, and you put in Kim Kardashian in your tags and, you know, Khloe Kardashian, that would be considered tag loading. So. Right. So. Yeah. So. Anyway, bottom line, Flat Earth is still doing what it's supposed to be doing, and the adpocalypse didn't. We got off easy, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, <coughs> could we have gone a whole different really way. Lose videos in the sense that Flat Earth isn't going down the tubes. It's due to the adpocalypse, so there's yeah. no worries. It's just another annoying thing they're doing. But yeah. the thing is, is that we've decided to play the game and the game is called YouTube. We yeah. signed up for this and they are the Kings and they made the rules. And as long as we want to play in the kingdom, nothing much we can do. We can go off platform and many people have done that. Luckily flat earth is not a negative Remember, It's, it's got a lot of positive aspects to it. So it's not a negative conspiracy thing. Right. So I mean, YouTube could have absolutely gone after us. Yeah, they, YouTube they, could, they still could. But. They, they could make it so there's no no flat earthers on YouTube, no flat earth videos. That could yep. be a word that their bots or whatever search yeah. for, and we'd all be done for. But they haven't. Uh, so. D Marble said it's a psyop to saturate flat earth and muddy the waters. It's What's he talking about? That it's a psyop to saturate flat earth and muddy the waters. Which and part? That might be when people are putting things like porn or oh, right, right, right. or tag loading or using um, thumbnails, I guess, that aren't appropriate or germane to the topic. Luckily for us, there's right. so much good content out there. It's amazing, though, because like now I'm looking where you type in flat earth and just use a general filter. It's amazing some of these uh, uh, some of the channels that are out there, depending on what, what filters you're using. Big, big, big channels. I need yeah. to correct myself. It wasn't D Marble talking about the tag loading. He was he was answering somebody who I don't know in here who asks D Marble how come crepus crepus crepuscular rays underwater make it look like the sun is just above the surface. And I think his response was that's a psyop. You and I have just been invited <laughs> to the Dominican for a fish fry this winter. Really? Yeah, I'm reading this. Flat out elected just did it. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, because I, when I did my interview with him, which is the last one, episode one, number 194, yeah, 194, hmm. 193, excuse me. Anyway, with Rand Campbell, um, he was talking about a resort he lives on in the Dominican Republic, and he's going to have flat earthers come out. That hmm. would be cool. Cool. That would be beautiful. It's a part of the world I've not seen. You, have you been there? I have not. Huh. I have not. I have also not been to Sydney, where I was invited. They're going to do their first Flat Earth conference down in Australia. That's amazing. I really want to go there. I've never been to Australia it, either. It just, it just happened yesterday. So they said, in fact, it's going to be, remember the video that I use in some of my things where it's that park where they've got a Flat Earth map in the middle of that water, that fountain, and the guy's kind oh, of jumping. Oh, yes, the Flat Earth fountain, people call it. Down at Darling Park. That's where they're going to do it, somewhere near there. That thing is beautiful. In that, in that area. So. Well, let me go into the live chat and say hello to all who are here. I totally appreciate everyone being here. Thank you very much. And uh, give the video a thumbs up if you like it, or a thumbs down if you hate it. It's up to you. Um, hello to Ukdina Walker, who said she's feeling a bit under the weather, so we wish her well. 
Uh, we've got Davy Little in here. He says, Alex Jones Infowars gets grief from you too. And uh, CC is here talking about the sun setting far below the horizon. You can still see the blue hue, but when the moon is full, you can't even see your own shadow. Obviously, internal light from the moon. I would have to think about that too. It's hard to read something like that when you're reading chat comments because that there's a whole thing we could go off on. Right. Um, hey to Israel Adams and Ridgeview and Timaeus, who says 194 because he kept track of my shows better than I did. Thank you. I need a, I need an assistant. Well, he's got his own channel. I mean, we all need assistants, right? Um, hello to uh, Ice, don't we? Wouldn't you like to have an assistant sometimes? Uh, eventually, yes. Yes, I would. I mean... You, we all would. I mean, that when you have a partner in your life, meaning your husband or wife or boyfriend or girlfriend or same sex, depending upon what your thing is, that person is your assistant and you're their assistant. But I've got three cats and they're not really doing much except for breaking no. things. You, you, can't, <laughs> you can't expect cats to like manage uh, big feather fans. No, they don't. Well, they do dust things with their tails. So oh, there's something that. anyway. Uh, Martin Liebke is here too and Bill Keith. We said that the flat out elected interview was a great one. Oh, and speak of the non devil, we've got Rand a flat out elected here. <laughs> we didn't want to say speak of the devil and then say Rand is here because that would just be not good. I was about to um, say. <laughs> um, Paul Mackinson is here too. And he's asking what we think Trump is going to do with the space program. Well, considering that Trump doesn't really control anything, I think the space, do anything with space program. E Elon Musk can do well, anything he, he wants. He granted more money to NASA. Yeah, and he locked it in to where it was guaranteed money, no matter what they do. It's guaranteed money, twenty billion, no matter no matter what projects they finish. Uh, the video challenge in American. Oh yeah, sorry, Bill Keith was saying, Mark, I, like I emailed you. Were reading you. to yourself. That was kind of cool. <laughs> you, well, you know what people do when they're reading to themselves or if you're on the phone you know with somebody who's you know you're calling into order something let's just say and they're looking up your account number like you're calling your electric company and they're like okay hold for a moment all right let me look you up patricia steer they make that noise usually a train sound what what is that everyone does it it's funny you don't know it's a good point and yes i i, I got your email bill thank you mm. Bill Keith. Um, Ridgeview is greeting Political Hillbilly. And so, hey, Political Hillbilly, I haven't seen you yet. Hello to Awakened Mind and Ander Zace and Kitty Felines. That's one of the nicest YouTube usernames ever. Uh, Andreas Design says, hi, flat out elected. My contact's playing up, so I'm not the very small print. Not So I'm read your name wrong, please accept my apology in way advanced. Hey to Arwin. Hey, and there's Political Hillbilly. And uh, we've got Break the Matrix for All, who says he got a strike. Oh, For what? Now, when you get a strike, when you get a copyright strike, it's kind of more like a slap on the hand. It's a warning. Do they do anything to you? Mm, depends, on, depends on what kind of strike it is. Oh, okay. So, so there's a copyright strike. There's a there's copyright a strike. Service strike. That's, that's you, nothing much. Not much happens to you your first strike. It's a three strike system. One strike is just a warning that says, "Look, don't do it again." Two strikes, and your account is pretty much crippled. You uh, can only make less than fifteen minute videos. It's like you started new, and you can't do live streams. Now, I've seen people, uh, one in particular, I'm not going to give them the name, where they got their live streams taken down, uh, but that was the only thing that was disabled because you're not remember you're not supposed to live stream copyrighted material that's also being live streamed you know you can't the reason that the perfect example would be uh sports programs you 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 even put an nfl game you start uh copying nfl games over onto your system you're not going to last long so yes and three strikes your channel is dead okay well there's a okay all right, well, three strikes, you're out. I guess that kind of yeah. makes a lot but of But appeal sense. the strike if you don't think it's legit. I've had every strike, and I've only had five. I've had them all overturned by some pretty big people. Coast to coast. Yeah. Uh, tra trailer Park Boys. Right, right. They uh, they struck me, and, and I claimed fair use because my channel is a Flat Earth News channel, and I was reporting on it. So if you, a celebrity, if George Clooney came out tomorrow and talked about Flat Earth, by God, I'm going to put him on my channel and say George Clooney talked about Flat Earth. You know what? You'd be the first person on that story in the world. <laughs> I would. 
no, no. I, you know, he's, I, I, I people you know, have asked me, what's up with Mark Sargent and George? No, 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 no. George Clooney. It's an no, inside he's, joke, really. He's a, he's a quintessential American leading actor, you know, probably yeah. going to be the last of the era. You know, he's like not, a Clark Gable from Monty Python. Exactly. Harry Grant, Randolph Scott. Oh, Harry Grant. I, yeah. I really I mean, like Harry Grant. He, but, no, no. He, is he my favorite actor in the world? No, no. My favorite actor for the longest time was Gary Oldman. Interesting. Yeah. I like the different actors. Sam mm -hmm. Rockwell is also right up there. Uh, but, you know, one of the new guys, which I love, and I you probably haven't watched much, is uh, Peter Dink Dinklage. That na last name kind of needs to go, but okay. No, I don't know who that but is. He, but he is, no, he's the, he's the dwarf on Game of Thrones. Oh, see, I've never watched Game of Thrones. Yeah, well, he's done some other stuff. He's a hell of an actor. That's hell of cool. an actor. Yeah. Uh, Ty I'll Gordon is stuff. here who says, we have never been monetized. And we is Flat Revival, his channel. Flat Revival got a strike for a video that never existed. Censorship, it's real. YouTube is a playground bully. Playground bully, that is really... It, it can wow. be, no question, but appeal it. If you think you're in the wrong, appeal it and they will listen. Yeah. So, but well, at the same time, they will also... If somebody takes your video, that's your original content, and your video is set to standard YouTube license, and they take your video and put it on their channel and change it to Creative Commons. And then some third party comes in and takes your video from their channel and puts it on their channel because, hey, it was Creative Commons. It's open for anybody to use. Yeah. It's, you have a heck of a time trying to explain to YouTube, well, well, that guy did this to me and then that guy. It is a playground bully sort of thing, you know? Yeah, it is. And if you have enough power, they like like for example well, what's power is a bigger channel have big not just bigger channel bigger smaller? bigger celebrity so if a bigger celebrity well, that's not like, fair we should all be equal. It, and that's On a YouTube. wonderful thought Patricia. it is <laughs> it, it is but at the same time we all know how it works so, you know, daniel tosh his team from comedy central didn't hit me on a copyright strike they politely just blocked the video worldwide and because it had half, half a <laughs> well, that was at least of the two, it's better, right? Well, I mean, nothing was against me. It's like, okay, you got your nickels because I had half a million hits off of it. Didn't think it was going to get half a million hits. That's a lot for Daniel Tosh talking about Flat Earth. And when I appealed it, it was immediately robot stamped. It says, no, you can't appeal it. If you try to appeal it again, literally, it was the verbiage. If you try to appeal it again and it gets turned down, which it will, you will get a strike just for basically hassling us. Wow. Yeah. But, and then we'll do the other side. And that was, remember when that little Katy Perry six second yes. clip came out? That was a big thing. If anyone doesn't remember Katy Perry, in, she was doing a live hangout and was just reading her chat and read the words that someone put in a flat earther. I forgot who, I wish I remembered, wrote flat, something about flat earth. And she read, right, it, she read it. Flat earth. And yeah. not, not that it made a difference that Katy Perry said flat earth, but it was entertaining for the moment and a lot of people captured it and made videos and they all got taken down but well uh, there's a few remnants still out there but the point was when i appealed that one when you're that big they don't even have to respond so i never even got i never got a thing back from them not like oh no we looked at your appeal it's like just sh crickets kind of like you know what Katy Perry doesn't have to respond to this. So and you you retitle it something like Katy, you know who says flat earth or something, right? Yeah, and they and they got that and they got that one too. Oh. Oh yeah. Tricky, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. That well, that was manually. And that was basically off the thumbnail. It's because the oh, thumbnail yeah. was her. Uh, oh, yeah, right? the Matrix for around. all says uh he just had his crisis actor gag reel taken down for bullying. We're bullying fake people. Uh, that doesn't even seem <laughs> Is that, is that right? I mean, if you're bullying, supposedly, people who don't really exist that are using fake names and are playing roles in a in a false flag or hoax, uh, right. how can you even... that, that does, That's beyond right. me. It's ridiculous. Yes, indeed. Um, yeah. Israel Adams as well. I've, oh, Israel Adams is mentioning Crow 777. I finally subscribed to Crow 777's podcast a couple of days ago. <laughs> it's one hey. of those things I keep telling myself I'll do, and I always forget. And finally, I have. I've been enjoying his content for free on YouTube for quite a yeah. long time, and now I feel like I owe it to sub him. I mean, he has some him. good rants. Subscribe it. Jimmy Vincent says, "Let's rename Mark and Patricia's show to Mork and Mindy." What say ye, Fepe Flat Earthers? That's a nice thought, except we can't because my real sister's name is, is actually Minda. Minda. 
Yeah. And we caught that joke. You can imagine my parents name us in the 60s, right? And then the show comes out in the 70s, Mork and Mindy, which was set I in. I remember that show. That's where Nanu Nanu comes from. And, you know, yep. and of course, Robin Williams is dead now. Yeah. But what or was more is he conspiracy alert? What was more interesting about that show for me was Mork and Mindy. That show was set in. I don't Boulder, remember. Boulder, Colorado. <gasps> interesting. Yeah. Right. I remember watching that when I was really young. There were some TV shows at that time frame that I did watch with my sister and brother, or sometimes mother. Yeah. So, Mork and for I Mork, have, who and was I have on uh, DVD, not Mork and Mindy, though. But. That was quite a spinoff, another spinoff from the Happy Days era. Oh, yes. Remember, he was just a random alien that showed up when they were running out of plot lines. <laughs> you know what? That's the case with most, what do they call it? Jumping the shark. When they introduce the shark, a character yeah. that doesn't have anything to do with anything, when they introduce an alien, even cartoons, I think the Flintstones at one point introduce yep. some kind of alien thing. Mis you know, Mr. they're at their Mi road's end. Yeah, everyone steals from everybody else. Mork was stolen from the Flintstones, Mr. Mitzelplick, as me doing my comic book geek geek tour right now and mr mitzelplick i'm I sorry no i'm sorry wow no sorry the flintstones one was gazoo because it's easier to say yes superman's version was mr mitzelplick so mitzelplick gazoo mork mork that's that's the leaps i'm making there mark arcane information sergeant reporting for duty <laughs> there you go so no you know we can't call it mork and mindy sorry my sister would probably file some sort of injunction yeah exactly but we could make a promo for our show, for the secret show, using Mark and Mindy as the characters that represent us. Oh, I could totally rip the, the intro Let's from that thing. It. Let's do that. All right. Hello to Carly Sunshine. People are asking what's going on with IPS. Um, he's still doing live stuff. I caught a live show the other day and was in the chat talking about space bubbles. And how when you show people uh, supposed ISS footage, people that are in the matrix, and you say, look at these bubbles, and you show them all sorts of amazing videos that are out that are slowing it down, or that are showing reflections in helmets, like bling bling, the BS of the ISS is done, and many other people. Uh, the people just sort of stare with sort of that glazed look in their eye and say, I don't see anything wrong with that. And then if you tell them, well, NASA, they, they, they do their, supposedly they train in swimming pools, and but really the whole thing in the ISS is part of it when they do spacewalks is done in a swimming pool. Right. And this is what I've heard. Well, probably the footage on YouTube is just footage from their training exercises. And you flat earthers have grabbed it and made videos out of it and tried to pretend it was really NASA doing spacewalks. And at that it's point, nice, you just nice. have to say, uh. <laughs> Oh, no, no. I've had people, guys that will say, okay, fine. So the moon photos are a piece of crap. That doesn't mean that everything's fake. Literally, they've said that. Not just one person. That's like if you're in a relationship. Let's. I'll just use me for example. I've, I had. A, if I had a boyfriend and he cheated on me once, he will cheat on me again. It's the same sort of thing. If if you're a liar, you're a liar. I yeah. mean, NASA lied with the moon, and they lie about everything. Yeah. Maybe they might accidentally the, get something right occasionally. The the boyfriend thing you've got is pretty close where it's it's like the, the wife gets some, catches her cheating like with his receptionist. It's like, wait a minute. All your receptionists for the last 15 years were pretty. Did you sleep with all the, you know, it's like, well, <laughs> you caught me once. It's not like I was sleeping with all of them, you know, but he was. My so. dad had a, uh, her name was Lillian Breed. Um, Lillian Breed. I like that name. This was back in the 60s. That was his receptionist. She literally looked like what could be described in a, uh, in a fiction book as an old battle axe. There would be no way my mother would ever feel that my father was cheating on her with Lillian Breed. Lillian Breed was a no-nonsense woman who wore a very tight bun, and she looked like she was 90. But then again, I was pretty young. Everyone like, looked 90 <laughs> over the age of seven. <laughs> That's like the receptionist from uh, Jim Carrey's movie, The Liar Liar. I don't remember that. Didn't the you? older receptionist where she was like tough as nails, but I mean, she was old enough to probably be his mother. Back in those days when people had receptionists like that, that's probably an excellent receptionist to have. No nonsense. Yep. Uh, hello to Jibby Jedi who says people have Stockholm syndrome about the government lying to them. Yes, indeed they do. Mm -hmm. 
Um, everyone is asking whatever happened to, it's not everyone, excuse me, Bill Keith is asking. <laughs> everyone. Everybody. <laughs> That's how the grapevine starts, by the way. Exactly. Um, Haven't you heard? Everybody's saying it. Let's start a rumor right now. <laughs> um, we should do that one day, start a rumor and see how far it gets until the next show happens. But no, that's not good. And the truth movement, it wouldn't no, be No, it it's too, funny, too easy in conspiracy world. Yes, indeed. People are so paranoid. Bill Keith is asking, what happened to Mad Mike? I'm not completely sure. Um, I think he's pretty much blowing everybody off now. Yeah, he put the sticker on the rocket. Supposedly, he might be willing to bring the rocket to FEMA camp coming up uh, next month. Uh, in Colorado, the big arts and music event that uh, IPS and others are hosting. Whether he does or not, we don't know. I have next, no idea. I'm not connected in any way to Mad time. Mike. I've, I did talk to him on the phone once or twice, but never interviewed him. He didn't, when I talked to him, act in a way that gave me the confidence to believe that he would actually show up for the interview. So I decided never to schedule one. And in a way, I guess my, uh, my I don't know, ESP or whatever it was, my Your instincts ESPN. were correct, right? Yeah. Again, I was it's hoping for I was hoping for worst case scenario where he got up there and then the rocket failed and he augured into the ground and became the first real flat Earth martyr. <laughs> okay. I did. That's that was, that was what I was hoping for. I was like, look at people going, "Oh, Mark, that's dark and horrible." It's like it would have been amazing press. I wonder if like one of the planes supposedly during 9-11, he would disappear into a field and they would find absolutely no sign of him or the rocket. Same thing. Because they said he vaporized when he hit the oh, ground. Oh, right. <laughs> right. Uh, so, Mad Mike. I mean, he got money that was, uh, the, I don't know exactly what occurred, but, you know, he got the money and put the sticker on and then the rest is sort of out of, it's not definitely on, not in my control or your control, but nope. one of those lessons to be learned, you know, mm -hmm. about people trusting people. Hello to Toto Cults, one of the fastest mods in Flat Earth. Um, Rob Morrill said he should launch the rocket in Raleigh. Raleigh, excuse me. Uh, that would be, I mean, I don't think he's ever going to launch the rocket, to be honest. I mean, honestly, it would still be a great promo piece to put it in the parking lot. That's what I, that, and that is what IPS is asking him to do. At Just this drag point, it over there. Dude, if you want press, look, I don't know that this guy from Adam. It's a I don't weird think thing. the guy, see, I'm but, talking about a guy I don't really know. He didn't do what he said he was going to do, and he kept putting it off, and he kind of, it was. But the, but the press okay. wouldn't care. The press would shoot it regardless. Yeah, I mean, would it make us come off? Just sitting as, there, it would look cool. It would yeah. be like a statue or a display. What are they going to do with this that. rocket? What does this rocket mean? Is this rocket a threat to national security? We'll find out. I mean, you could go. You know, was this? You could you could swirl ro rumors like this rocket was developed in North Korea. You could have all sorts of fun with this rocket. <laughs> flat Earth Freedom with Lisa J. Prefer Flat says he's the rocket man. Yeah, I'm not going to sing it. Not gonna. Can't Rocket make me. Man. That's all I know. No. <laughs> I would have chronic lyricosis if I were to actually sing the lyrics to that song because I don't really know them. So I get it all wrong. Something like early mountain music, everyone. And I know that's not what it says. <laughs> what does it say? Rocket Man, what's the rest? I'm not going to look up the lyrics for you. No, well, no. Somebody put it in chat. It's not. Oh, yeah, that's mountain what you want. Music, you want people everyone. filling the chat with Rocket Man. Well, just the lyric after he sings, after he sings Rocket Man. People are mm -hmm. like, what kind of song are we talking about here? Yeah. Uh, anyway. Uh, <laughs> anyway, what's next? What's next? Um, uh, Alex Aquarius is here. Uh, oh, tickets. We should probably talk about tickets. Yeah, let's do it. All right. So we have the tickets are, you know, I've been playing Matchmaker. Matchmaker, matchmaker. Is that what this is a song? song? Yeah, I know all the lyrics to Matchmaker, Matchmaker. Matchmaker. Uh, anyway. Uh, my mom being Jewish, growing up non-Jewish, but we did go see, um, oh my gosh, I'm losing my mind, uh, Fiddler on the Roof, the movie when it came out. And I just know the lyrics to that song. Wait, you're Jewish? Well, if your mother's Jewish, you're considered Jewish. Oh, but right. Okay. I was baptized Presbyterian. Got it. The uh, <laughs> we... And I practice neither religion and never have. I've been I'm looking up Elton John Rocket Man now, though. Oh, good lord! Okay, so I've been playing Matchmaker for the whole uh, 
the, the ticket thing for the conference because you know, all the tickets are sold out again the the last 20 some seats that robbie carved out of nowhere uh, have been sold the vip t v vip tickets are gone uh the press passes i don't know how many of those are left uh, if you're press but the in fact, there's a guy supposedly going to be coming down uh, another guy coming down and sh trying to shoot a documentary and i asked the 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 producer who going have you gotten your press passes yet he goes no i go you know i didn't want to break it to him I was like i don't know if he's going to get such a you know they're not going to just open the doors for this guy because these people think they can just walk in like that well again this conan o'brien could walk in this guy not so much jimmy kimmel's team could could walk in if they wanted to oh i'm sorry so if anybody wants tickets jimmy kimmel's team what is that his real name no, it sounds like you just said that. And I'm like, no. is that his real name? No, no, it's no, I didn't say that. No, it's just Jimmy Kimmel. Oh, okay. Wow. That was weird. I just had a weird, what's it called when you hear something that you didn't hear, but it's not deja vu? I don't know. Could that be, be Bujade? Subliminal hot sex messages. I don't know. <laughs> you could be hearing just different last names, Steinbergman, something like that. <laughs> okay. So what did I say? Rocket Man, early mountain music, everyone. The real lyrics are Rocket Man burning out his fuse up here alone. <laughs> uh, it's not the worst I've ever heard. The worst I ever heard, and I'm not making this up. This kid was a freshman in high school, sung ACDC, Dirty mm -hmm. Deeds, Done Dirt Cheese. <laughs> okay. Could that not one. make that up. And and I'm, he's in a room full of guys, right? And and he's singing this, and we're looking at him going, dude, that's, that's not it. That is not even, no. Why would you even think that? <laughs> it doesn't even make sense. Well, even my make lyrics sense. didn't make sense either, though. So. so if you want tickets to the conference, if you want to sell them, if you want to buy them, email me at msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net, and I will try to match you up with people. All I'll do them is forwarding emails. So some person says, I have tickets. I have one or two tickets usually. And I say, okay. And then somebody says, hey, I need one or two tickets. And I say, okay, you two should meet. Here's the email that they sent me. So there's transparency. Have fun with it. And then uh, you have to let the conference know because they are transferable. And that's it. So right now, I think there may be three I'm looking at mm. that might be available. And even that, I can only honestly say that there's one out of those three. It's absolutely not spoken for because I don't know if Jimmy Chews are gone. Uh, Jimmy Choo is a YouTuber, in case you don't know. Like, I do. Know he's that. also a shoe manufacturer or designer. Geocentric Ginger B Flats says, also known as Ginger Sugarbush, says, dirty deeds done with sheep. <laughs> okay. Nice. Nice. Uh, oh, no, people score lyrics. Going right into the gutter. People, people, look, musicians are known to, I mean, they, if you don't enunciate, if, if all bands were like cake, Oh, we'd have no problems at all. He enunciates everything very clearly. Uh, and and he makes sure the vocals are straight on top of everything else. Short skirt, long jacket, and the distance are great songs. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. And you can totally know every lyric in it. But um, like Bob Dylan, sometimes I have a hard time. I like when people do Bob Dylan impersonations because they just are a bunch of mumbling. <laughs> Nathan Oakley says his wife, Paula, loves Jimmy Choo's, or Choo's as they're called. Yeah. Uh, I had a good comment that I just probably skipped, which I shouldn't have. And it had something to do with Jimmy Kimmel. I, I, I want to credit who said it, crying over crisis actors. It was pretty disgusting, which is true. Oh, I'm sorry. You're sorry about what? Um... Uh, Ridgeview is saying, thank you, Mark, on the tickets. Goodbye. Oh, you had to the, get rid um, of somebody? Yep. Good. The, uh, yeah, 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 the tickets. I'm, I'm just dungarees. trying. Dungarees. Everyone knows those lyrics. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the tickets, the tickets are going to be, uh, well, for over the next three weeks, going to be dicey at best to try to acquire them. But like with anything, like with sports tickets, happens all the time. In fact, I don't think I remember going to a sporting event where I actually bought the ticket. It was all, it was usually from somebody else. You and I had a weird thing happen because you and I decided when we first got invited to speak at this event, uh, Flat Earth International Conference in Raleigh, the 9th and 10th of next month, that we were going to go early so that we would be there 
just extra time uh, and days early and then leave days early. And so we're like, yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. And we both jumped immediately and went and got our hotel rooms reserved. And then for some strange reason, I went to check just to make sure that because it was so long ago, right. we reserved the rooms. I went to go check on mine and uh, they said, we don't have any reservations for you. Patricia Steer, can you spell that? And, I, and I'm and i like, what? And then I said, well, I know Mark's bought tickets. So can you check under Mark Sargent? And they're like, no, we don't have any rooms under his name either for the date you specified, which was the 7th through 11th, which is the time that we're staying there, um, you know. For the for the pre and post conference right. event, as as well as the conference itself, and then I thought, wait a minute, maybe I'm calling the wrong hotel. No, right hotel. Maybe I'm calling the wrong. Uh, maybe they've got a sev several of them in the city. Well, they did, but this was the right one. And then I just said, do you have Robbie Davidson listed? And they looked it up and they said yes. And then I was like struck with panic. I'm like, oh no, oh no, I'm not going to be able to go. And Mark, oh my gosh, we're going to have to find. We're going to have to get a tent and camp outside. And then I realized that we had flown in a day earlier and didn't book hotel rooms for the first day. Yeah. So, yeah. I, which was good that you called me on that and said, oh, yeah, by the way, you better. Which we would person? have landed and had to like sleep in the lobby. Well, <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, land, I'm landing so late on that first night. I actually, I actually could have probably camped out in the lobby for a few hours, although that would have been uncomfortable at best. So. Flat Earth Accord. This is one of the things where I've got chronic lyricosis. A Bruce Springs, excuse me, an, excuse me, an ELO song where it says, "Don't bring me down, Bruce." That's what how I've always sung it in my mind. That ELO song. What is that uh, song? What is the lyric? Um, don't bring me down, Bruce. That's how it sounds like. No, no, no. What? What is the? What hey, is it? Flat Earth Accord. Uh, tell us the ELO, the title. I can't remember. Yeah. What is it? it might be called like, "Don't Bring Me Down." In fact, you could type that into Google. It'd probably fill it in for you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good times for all. Hey, hello. It says Pearl Jam is notorious for people singing the wrong words. I've heard so many versions of Jeremy. It's hilarious. Jeremy spoken, you know. I know you're not old enough to remember this, but. Good saying that. I'm I'm very pl not pleased with my age. I'm very fine with my age. Very much so. All right. Well, do you, remember, do you remember, do you remember when myself. Rick Springfield released that song? Uh, they call Does me Bruce. Born? No. Oh, my God, because Rick Springfield and Bruce Springsteen, people, for whatever reason, kept confusing the two. They're nothing like each other. Uh, look it up if you get a chance. He actually wrote a song. It was on the radio called effect. Rick. No, I'm t I'm I believe you, but I can't imagine people would confuse. Don't bring me down, Ruse. That's the name. That's the word. Yeah, it sounds like Bruce. <laughs> what's, what's that even mean? Don't bring me down, Ruse. No idea. Mm. Skyfly Bry is saying he's got to go, but keep up the good work. Hello, Skyfly. Thanks for being here. I appreciate it. Um, <laughs> Jimmy Jedi, this one, blinded by the light, revved up like a douche in the middle oh, of the oh, night. But that's yeah. not at all what it says. <laughs> but I, that's what it sounds okay, like. Okay, so the song is literally, it's 1984. It's called Bruce by Rick Springfield. And the lyrics, the, the beginning, the literally, uh, the... The chorus goes, she called me Bruce. I can hear her calling Bruce. Probably, I, you know what happened. So he got together with a with a groupie and she was calling his name out in bed. And he's like, hold on, hold on. who the hell? Holy smokes. She's it's, she only on. sleeping with me because she thinks she, I'm Bruce Springsteen. Exactly. <laughs> so he says, honey, my name is not Bruce. Just call me the boss. <laughs> yeah, in fact, yeah, I'm reading through the entire song. He called me Bruce. Uh, you know, my mom, oh, oh, no, that's funny. You know, my mama called me the long distance yesterday. And as she got off the phone, I swear I heard her say, bye-bye, Bruce. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, funny. I love all this lyric stuff. Um, but, uh, yeah. On a different subject, back to Mad Mike, Chris Topher uh, said that uh, Mad Mike got angry and didn't want to have anything to do with Flat Earth when people started calling him transgender during the summer of the transvestigation that happened on YouTube when everyone went yeah. absolutely nuts. Glad we're more or less past that. I was yeah, hoping for something fast. new. I mean, look how fast, by the way, all this well, stuff has ripped it, through the news. Was that. Then it was, it was tranny gate and then it was Satan gate. And I don't know where we are now. Where well, are now we? there's, what now gate there's, are we in now? Now there's <laughs> nothing in the news. It's bugging me. I, you know, we, we went through 
Puerto Rico, followed by Vegas, followed by the, the North California fires. And they, once they, they exited quickly from mainstream media, now there's nothing to fill the gap. Yeah, but within Flat Earth, there's always some little piece of drama going on that's going. Something. Circling. I've been looking over this last week. Nothing's really caught my eye. Yeah, there's not that much going on right now. Not much drama at all, which is good. But people people enjoy the drama, though. So. Yeah. Other than, of course, you know, the adpocalypse. Yeah, the is, adpocalypse is, is a thing for sure. Which has been So ever. Alex Aquarius says two carburetors is called a deuce. So it's deuce not douche so yeah you know what you are if you're wondering singer, about feminine hygiene or car parts they're not interchangeable if you're a singer you got to enunciate <laughs> you do but when you're a singer being cool is one of the things that you have as a goal when you're a rock singer and enunciating is prissy you want to the, say the, it all slangish and loose the difference now is back when we were in school, way back in the old when days. Music was good. <laughs> well, no, we didn't. Unless they printed the lyrics in the album cover, which was not that often, you didn't know. Yeah, you couldn't so, go just go to YouTube or go on yeah, your phone and look. You, you couldn't look it up. You had to just it's like, all right, who knows the words of this freaking song? Hey to all is Brittany and Money Magnet. Oh, Money Magnet says casting couch gate is what's. Oh, oh well yeah that well because sure. of that now everybody's coming out on everybody you know every every in fact there was a, an olympic athlete who said that her medical doctor came after her. wasn't george clooney involved somewhat in casting gate supposedly not that i follow this you know when you go into yahoo it just comes up as the today's top story picture mm -hmm. of george clooney and because of you i looked it up I'm, I'm, i read the story because i know you always say i george didn't clooney. see anything on george i saw something on ben affleck where he was proactive and said yeah i'm totally sorry i i did that because you know he became a producer later now was Tori so totally sorry he did what he he groped a somebody really yeah I, 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 I just yeah, he came out almost nothing. right afterwards and said, you know, right up front. Basically, well, you know, he you can take it one of two ways. Either he was proactive and being the good guy or somebody immediately made a phone call and says, I'm totally going to, you know, come after you. And he's like, fine, I'll defuse this in two seconds. Everyone will be too busy looking at Harvey. No one's going to pay attention to me. And that worked. So if that was the case. But yeah, it, it, look, it, we all know what happens in Hollywood. It's a it's an awful, awful business. Uh, it's also a two-way street, and there's there's a lot of the one of the best quotes. You, we're talking about power-hungry men in a room full of desperate people, mm -hmm. men and women. And that is, yes. it's not it. Look, it's not just that these men are willing. You know, they didn't come up with this idea on their own. Right, right? absolute it, power. Yep, yep. absolutely. It's the other side, and that is, look, I'm not going back home to Kansas. What can I do to get this part? Right, because men are dumb, you know, men are idiots, and all of a sudden they hear that the first time, and then all of a sudden they start repeating, it, which is, Hey, little Missy or little fella, whoever you are, yeah, you know, what are you willing to do to get this part? And you know, then it just snowballs from there because well, I work really hard and show up early and help others on the team. No, that's not what I meant, little Missy, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> See yeah, that couch we, over there. Why don't you go have a seat? <laughs> oh no, no, leave the clothes over here. Yeah, and then the oh, just the, the 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 camera just goes to a curtain blowing in the wind. <laughs> yeah, it's it's bad. It's yeah. uh, look, I if anyone's ever spent time in Los Angeles, down in that area, you know, you run into these people. People with because all all these people have their day jobs. They're waiting tables. They're mm -hmm. doing this. They're doing that, and you can see just the the hunger in their eyes that they want to and physical make. hunger they don't have they're not making any money oh yeah they're and and every i mean in new most... york too the movie fame was built on oh, yeah. that concept with irene cara back 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 in the 80s most where of that. there was a casting couch moment where she was being filmed and she had to take her dress off crying oh, yeah. Yeah. Most most actors. Oh hell! Look at um uh the not that I've seen a lot of Broadway musicals, but I have. Uh, chorus line: the song "Tits and Ass." Oh, right. That is straight out of it. Look, most actors, people do not understand I'm how close. Get my video they... flag for you saying TNA. You think? 
No, doubt it. The um, where most actors are on the verge of collapse anyway, just before they make it big. Very, very few actors have it cushy. That's the whole motivation of being there. Look, uh, the most one of the most famous examples was Michael J. Fox. He was living in his car when he got the Family Ties call. Amazing. I, and and yet the only fact the only person I ever heard that you know, other than I I'm not going to count Hollywood royalty, you know people that are you know, like Michael Douglas or Kiefer Sutherland or uh, you know um, Carrie Fisher or you know any any of the people that are sons and daughters of actors that's that's a whole different group, but the only person that I knew that had it absolutely cushy and, and it's like I don't even know what her motivation was being there was uh, Julia Louise Dreyfus. That's right. She is actually a part of French royalty. Interesting. I know, right? It's like, which, I, I'm, 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 you know, I'm reading Paltrow. this. Why is she on Saturday Night Live? She doesn't need to do this. Gwyneth Paltrow as well. Not yes. royalty, but she's yeah. royalty. Yeah, that's different though. If you're in the industry, you're going to be in it anyway. So, uh, Matrix is said, uh, oh, I, I hate when it moves too fast. Harvey Weinstein is just one of many. Believe me, he's the tip of the iceberg. Well, but he's probably the biggest tip. And also case. really repulsive looking. So, yeah. Yeah, he abused it as much as anybody. Look, it's just but too maybe easy. That's unfair for me to say he's repulsive looking. I never really thought about him as a human being before. He was just one of the many people that I know is famous that I don't pay any attention to. But when you see him and you know about all this, maybe your mind is colored with the fact that he's very manipulative and dark. Right. But are we 100% sure all these things happened? You know, since we are people who look into the truth, is it true or is it some kind of a blackmail job? Is he maybe what, potentially he innocent? That he took advantage of of little budding starlets, come on, of course he did. In fact, this 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 story coming out will only go so far because the flip side of it is the gay side, and that story ain't coming out because interesting because there are no gay all, uh, actors in Hollywood, right? I know. mean. Right. I mean, so, there's no gay players in the NFL. There's no, you know, anything that's you know, where where you have to have a straight demographic. There are no there are no gay actors in Hollywood. So I know, of course, except there's a the ones that are gay and that are out. That yeah, yeah I know, yeah. we know. What Har you're Harvey Firestein, Nathan Lane, uh, what's his face from Doogie Howser. The, yeah, those guys are fine. But even Doogie Howser, it took him years before he came out. Uh, but the others, so yeah, you can't have a casting couch gate on that side. So not I'm not going to poke too much, but let's say a mainstream straight role Hollywood actor, he could never come out and say, "Oh yeah, by the way, this this producer seduced me," because then he would it would be uh, mutually assured destruction. He would destroy his own career as well as the producer's. So that will not come out. Yeah, he's done. He's done in Hollywood, but he's got a lot of money. Is he going to be sued? Harvey. Oh yeah, he'll be so he'll be. Uh, he'll he's be not. His his punishment is that his power is gone. Yeah, his um, and also his star has been tarnished forever. Yeah, yeah. He he will know. He will now be the 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 example that they will use in Hollywood. You know, don't be like Harvey we uh, uh, Weinstein. Right. You know, yeah. I mean, even his brother. I don't know how insulated his brother is right now. He's the one that's running the company because it's a it's a brother team. So I don't know what to say. What a mess. And he probably knew his brother was doing this all along because. Oh, yeah, of course. Everybody did. Speaking, you know, I think everyone knew. But when you're, when you're, and other workers. Not to do any, not to do any comparison, but look at Kennedy. Yeah. Everybody. I mean, he had people helping him procure women. Oh, yeah. Helping that's, the that, secret meetings occur. Yeah. That's a tougher gig to, to pull off. And everybody knew. But There's a swimming pool in the White House where they used to get the fresh young starlets to go in their bathing suits, which were basically really covered up compared to today's standards, and swim with Kennedy because it was good for his back. And then go up to his room because it was probably not good for his back, but good for something else. <laughs> yeah. So I've heard. But it was he. I mean, look, he's the president and he's a good looking guy, I think. Right, Kennedy? I think Kennedy was good looking, I guess. Okay. I mean, he wasn't. I don't know, his body. When you think somebody better. presidential, he would fit that. Yeah, as, okay, let's put it as far as presidents go. He's one of the better looking presidents. I mean, Donald Trump does not fit the description of what you picture in your mind as a president. Obama no. did. And I'm not saying I like Obama or Donald Trump or Kennedy. No, no. I don't care about politics. But I mean, if Ra you do a movie about a president, Obama, Kennedy, yeah. Reagan in the right. 50s and 60s no, would have been. 
you know, when he was doing stuff like Bedtime for Bonzo and The Gipper. Yeah. <laughs> Funny. Yeah. Um, some people are saying Freddie Mercury, uh, Neil Patrick Harris. People are just naming gay people now. <laughs> Our chat well, yeah, has gone when, into when stuff like other realm. Well, we've gone into another realm with this conversation. When, when, yeah, when Freddie Mercury was singing, nobody knew he was gay. I mean, I hell, he was gay at all. I, even I though just, I know, how did we I miss don't that? Think about it. The band was called Queen. Oh my God, how did we miss I know. that? <laughs> but then, but then again, how did we miss the fact that um, there's no curvature or all these other things yeah. in flat Earth? How did we miss the the ridiculousness? Is the ridiculousness? Yeah, I couldn't couldn't see the forest for the trees. Of, <laughs> Couldn't. The heliocentric model. Couldn't yeah, I. We, the there's a I lot like of things that we take for granted, and we have for years and years. Mm -hmm. So that's it. So how are you holding up? How are you feeling? You know, uh, you're I, I think I'll, I'll be okay in the next couple of days. I, I I don't know what it is. It was just some. I don't know. Maybe something was going around. I don't know. You seem like you don't have a. Do you have a fever? Uh, I do have a little fever, uh, but I prepped a lot before this. I you drank slept, a lot of water. I drank a lot of water. I slept with uh, a cloth on my head Aww. for hours. I know I'm just, just trying to. I know I don't look like death warmed over, but I certainly felt like it last night. Come on over here. I'll take care of you. Aww. I don't mean that in a creepy way. I mean, <laughs> your forehead. What, what does that mean? I get the part? <laughs> well, I've got a very plush couch, Mr. Sergeant. I have to come over here and see. Because, because I'd do anything for that for that part. <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll see how good you are. <laughs> the show has just become very creepy. Um, no, I'm not making light of that when I do that. I'm just no, saying that. No, not look, at all. There's women who who've been mentally damaged by having to undergo that that probably created a crippling effect on their self-esteem for many many years oh, yeah. maybe unto into today even if they're famous now manipulation of anyone male or female by somebody who's in authority be they even somebody in the church or politician or somebody involved in the in the acting field it's just there's nothing good about it not zero and it's true. that's why abusing your power, what is it with the great power comes great responsibility. And old Harvey didn't uh, didn't use any responsibility uh, at all. Again, it's just men. Uh, the, you know, well, no, the, because women are bad too. Everyone's well, bad. They, 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 they're they not as bad as men. Really? I'm a guy. I don't know. God, men are horrible. But you're not a bad guy. No, I'm not. But I acknowledge what bad behavior is. Yeah. So, uh, you know the old saying, why do dogs lick their balls? Because they can because they can right yeah. oh by the way uh the show's gonna get flagged <laughs> Cy, Cy, Cy warrior when he when he said mark your your voice is beguiling thank you for that that was the russell brand line oh yes russell brand the russell oh, that... brand interview on your channel um it, it's got rave reviews but then a small percentage of people are criticizing you because you didn't bring up the creator as the reason why flat earth is being hidden well, number one, you I didn't have a chance to get a word in edgewise. I was two, working up to that point. Remember, it was 20 minutes hard. Of, of which I had limited amount of time. So, hey, did what I, did what I could. If you if guys think you could have done, done better, it again, even with the limited time you were given, but knowing you'd be given that limited time, would you have thrown out other words, other phrases, other descriptions? Had I known that he was going to start stepping on my toes, yeah, I would have cut it short and I would have said, all right, fine. The easiest answer is you're basically implying the proof of God. Right. And, and then see where he went with it. And then he'd be like, well, I don't know. You know, God can be defined in many different ways. And, you know, and then he'd be off. To the races. Yeah, I mean, flying. I couldn't, honestly, I was doing everything I could to not give him openings. That's there, what. Uh, when he was talking, it was like you, I could almost feel you saying, although you didn't. Uh, 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 no, no, you he was show, going to let him talk. Yeah. But also, guys, do not forget, that was three in the morning I was doing right. that. Right. And I, I, I had slept for great. three hours. And it's Russell Brand. And that's. And plus he released, I was happy. Here's here's the reason I was happy. When he released the full version, which is out yeah. there now, he actually titled it a uh, Flat Snow Globe or Little Flat Snow Globe. But some so. people as well won't be liking the fact that Snow Globe was used as an example as opposed to Infinite Plane or we don't know what it is. Oh, no, I, I give him other ones to play with. But I knew that Snow Globe is so easy to understand for the common person. And I didn't know, really know what his audience is like. So threw it out there, see if it stuck. And it did stick with him. So, hey, right. fine. If the Snow Globe works for that, great. 
I'm just going to take it for what it's worth. And at I'll... least Flat Earth got out to a bigger audience who had never heard about it before. Hopefully they'll research it and then they'll come to their own conclusions. Snow globe or infinite plane or fill in the blank, whatever. It and means. who knows when he talks and rubs elbows with other people, mm -hmm. will he be, you know, go do the whole Flat Earth drug dealer thing. It's like, you know. I'm not gonna try to imitate him, but you know, got hey, something. Hey. Yeah, man, <laughs> it's flat Earth. Don't take too much, man. Don't don't do it. Exactly. I'm warning you. Yeah, you'll be you'll be in your house with no food and no sleep for two weeks, man. I don't I don't give this to just everybody. <laughs> you'll be binge watching videos on YouTube. Oh, you'll man. know every content creator by their first name. Don't take it. Don't I only start. give this to my best customer. Can I trust you? Can I trust you <laughs> with this? Because this is flat Earth. You need a trench coat with the inside linings just being like flat earth brochures. Seriously, the flat earth drug deal should be a t-shirt. Right, exactly. Which, actually, that's pretty good. Because exactly. because that's what it comes down to. Anyway. When conspiracy guys are talking to each other, that's how those conversations go. You know, it's like, what do you got? You got JFK, you got World Trade Center, what do you got? It's like, oh, I got something. <laughs> it's new. It's new on the street. It is. Uh, Constance Brunn says Russell Brand is ADD, ADHD. Oh, geez, it's a mess. I didn't even realize he had he got married and had a kid. I didn't he know that either. He, he married after he rebounded fast. By the way, you know everything, just about everything. But not everything. By the way, if the power goes out, that's just because the power went out. It's not because I got drone strike. You hear that? Ah! I'll be like, if it starts to go, I'll do this. And then that'll be the last thing people see of, see of me. Right. Or I'll. So and the then you'll be light. the first flat earth martyr. Oh, I'm sorry. Do, no, I don't know everything, but did I know that? Yes. He he rebounded. I'll, I'll give you a quick little story. So he had a relationship and had a child with some probably act, some actor. Scott, no, Scottish television producer. Interesting. Who I think she, he met. Here's the thing though, right? She's 20. He's 40. Mm -hmm. She's 27. That's now fine enough i mean yeah yeah difference but, is either but, way don't bother me no 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 he's the relationship had been ongoing for the last 10 years do the math oh wow yeah so he met her when oh. she was 17. oh is that up in up in scotland probably what are the laws in scotland with that i don't know i also you don't know, like laws so but yes 16 with consent 15 with a note 14 with your dad in the room i don't know yeah, with a shotgun married. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> no, I know I know in Europe it's a little different. But mm -hmm. but so he knew her before she was a, had a career in the Scottish television production. So he brought did he know her when he was dating Katy Perry undoubtedly. So apparently they describe it as like a long-term thing, but yeah, they got married and have a kid. And he actually talks about it from time to time. Like that, that that relationship's doomed anyway. He's already saying it's like, "Oh yeah, you know, she, I have to deal with her and then the kid, you know, she basically it's completely hands off. The kid is completely in her control. Oktina uh, Walker, as people are talking about different models in the chat, says something that I truly believe, which is think and let think. We can all have our models or our theories. I agree completely. You've got the the dome model as the one you are a proponent of. I know Jaron is what he calls himself an AE guy. Other people have different models. And I don't think that if somebody asks you how you see the flat earth, that it's wrong to answer it in the way that is how you see the flat earth. It's no, when I, when I do the conference, I'm going to be holding one of these, maybe not this big one, because I don't think I'm going to be able to jam this in my bag. You know, it doesn't have the dome on it, but at the same time, I also like showing off that cool little dome thing. The idea of a dome or some sort of containment makes sense because water needs to be contained. And our atmosphere would need atmosphere. To That's the big one. But I don't understand how it works, and I don't claim to. Um, I love all the different theories. Dome is a very good one. Makes sense, but I'm not uh, signing off on that. And you know, hey. So I think we I think we can, we can mention by the way the uh... oh think and let think is an IPS quote by the way. Ukdina mentioned it, but credit needs to be given. Oh. I agree with that too. That's yeah. cool. What is it that we should mention? I've changed my mind. I'm not going to mention more song lyrics that are wrong. Nope. <laughs> no. I think it was more interesting that I came up with Rick Springfield's Bruce song. Yeah, that is weird. I'm going to go look. Um, you look. That'd be top forty. Nineteen eighty-four. You look in the live chat, and then you. 
Okay. All right, let me hear you. Uh, Dino Walker, look Bru- at my, uh, Bill email. Keith, Ridgeview, Zulu One, Arwin, Jonathan Doherty, Burke Childs, Fepe Vegan, I am Faze, Ordo Fepe Orientis, Dave Little, Constance Bruns. How am I doing so far? Really Radio good. Liver- You're Liverpool, fired Martin after Lidke- the casting Lidke. couch. <laughs> Flat Earth Accord. I'm ready for my close up. The uh, Did you know? P- Peter McKenzie. Poor Hollywood. Honestly, I thank God I'm not in that industry. Right. Uh, uh, Dave Little. 16 is legal, but wrong in Scotland. But wrong? Oh, wrong? Well, you know, as in... It's, like it shouldn't be done. It shouldn't be done. Oh, like it's legal, but probably not yeah, recommended. Yeah, yeah, don't touch that. Uh, Timaeus. Stay flat. Marku Keen. Uh, Hin. The Here's chat some. is popping. I have it on slow mode. So Twit it's wit. a little slow. Alex Aquarius. Hello Dip, to Twitwit. Dip Ra. Uh, Michael Kil- Kilpatrick, Rock Lover. Daniel Reza. Land Power and Math. Land Power and Math. That's funny. There's a whole bunch. I hate Patricia. Patricia sucks. Yeah, those Redheads are, are terrible. Ginger <laughs> are the devil. That one's kind of weird. It's wrong grammar. The, yeah, um, I have my fan club. <laughs> <laughs> Um, this is an interesting email that I received from uh, JF, the initials. I wanted to ask you and Mark what your opinion is about an article, which I will explain in a moment. Uh, what would we recommend if we happen to be witnesses at a major incident like happened in Las Vegas? Uh, the report, the article that he links is FBI wipes phones and laptops of Las Vegas massacre eyewitnesses. Now, whether or not this is true, the article goes on to say that workers at that uh, Harvest Moon uh, Route 91 festival, um, you know, they had their electronic devices. Oh, right, right, right. The videos and the messages wiped clean. So let's just say, I believe all these things are staged. So um, be they false flags or hoaxes, I'll leave that up to you. Um, I've already said that I initially thought that the event was a false flag and then I went into hoax and, you know, anyway. Um, JF asks, should we, if we're in a situation where there's a drill going on where there's normal people like us there, should we immediately upload images and videos somewhere or text them to a friend? Why would they need to delete everyone's personal recordings? How is that in the interest of justice? I think he would want that information open and available to all to review, including the jury. He says, if I'm not mistaken, did they not do that with the Zapruder film and they gave it back to the public after appropriate doctoring of the footage? Are you aware of that? I know you know a bit about Kennedy since. Yeah, AFK yeah. The Zabr- Zabruder film was mind. grabbed by them. It's like, why they let it get out in the first place? Right, right. Unless they cut out a couple frames. Because back then you could cut out a few frames. No but I mean, the whole Zabruder film now with these new eyes we've got could be completely staged, completely fake in every way. Could be back in the 60s, the early 60s. They weren't that good. Hmm. So... Uh, I, do I think it was chopped up a little bit? Yeah, mm. I do. Yeah, so I've seen videos where they show the chops. So. Yeah. And it's not just written off to a more of a herky-jerky 60s camera. Right. You Honestly, we're cuts. lucky to get any footage out of that So if thing. you're somewhere and a crisis event is going on... Hit, to grab your phone, hit video, and just start filming. Yeah, Film everything until this you're... This is about sort of... how the FBI supposedly wiped <clears throat> films. See, I don't even know if I believe that's true because crisis actors or people that weren't really real, whichever you want to call them, because I don't uh, want to get flagged, uh, they took video and put it up like the, the hoaxy live leak footage. Uh, of the, you know, the guy walking around with one hand holding his phone and the other one reaching out and touching people saying, are you okay? Are you okay? Or whatever he was saying, doing absolutely nothing. Um, So that phone wasn't wiped. So when you wipe phones, I don't know how they do it. I really don't know how they would do that. You wipe everything, you'd wipe all of it. So those things wouldn't exist. So if they wiped wiped regular people's phones and uh, other computer devices on the scene, then the crisis actors who filmed things and turned them into the media to sort of see the dialogue would have been wiped too. But I don't understand. Too confusing, really. Yeah. Then we've got what's going on in California, 
I mean, we do have Firegate going on right now. Firegate Wild is Firegate. That's a big very, one. very interesting. Natural it, or man-made. And again, I, because of first reactions, when you think of when somebody says, oh, yeah, there's wildfires in California, people go, yeah, whatever. It's like, it's what else is new? The sun right. came up. You know, there's always wildfires in California. It's hot. It's Actually, dry. the sun came across. Not came across. Okay. You know what I mean? So I we're in this case, like, nope, everyone glossed over it until the photos came out. Right. And then the photos like, whoa, we, what, in fact, the, one of the interesting things that if you heard it on the show last night, where was saying, someone was saying, where are the toilets? Meaning if a microwave device was used, if the mm -hmm. place was basically just incinerated from a distance, mm -hmm. then if there, I was going, why would the toilets explode? I was going, oh yeah. If you microwaved a liquid very, very quickly, it would act as a pressurized device and it would just just pop very interesting and like so a water balloon being porcelain they were bowls like putting a bowl in your microwave if you could put it on extra fast speed which really exist in fast the whole microwave to where it boiled so fast that it couldn't even contain the liquid that was inside it what and about trees burning from the inside out well if you that's put microwave in the microwave it cooks from the inside out yeah. and we're being if conspiratorial <laughs> the wildfires could also be real and these things just happened it's one of those things that's very debatable. You look at the the photos are really, I know, you know me, I, I looked at it and said, ah, it's probably just wildfires. But then you start looking at the neighborhoods themselves and you look, I mean, you've got, there's no bleeding edge for damage, meaning you've got a vaporized house, literally just ash next to a house that's not even burned at all. And it's real, I mean, it's not even across the street. It's sharing like a fence or was a fence. So I could have been, you know, they were testing out a new tech. Sure. Sure. Why not? And by the way, for people that don't know how microwave ovens work, a lot of people think it's friction that it vibrates the molecules. Which That's is what why I thought it was. It is not exactly. I'm, I'm, you know, a nerd argument when, when it starts out with it's actually, <laughs> it's actually, uh, it's changing the polarity. So it wiggles it. So it doesn't vibrate it side, you know, side to side or up and down. It literally flips the polarity fast, 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 fast. Fidget spinner style? Kinda. Only it goes back and forth instead of round okay. and round. So that's how it generates the... Well, the whole 5G thing is also, we've got 5G gate, we've got, uh, we've got fire gate, and we've got uh, uh, casting couch gate happening in our world right now. Yeah. So. But yet, when you go to CNN right this second, and I'm going to... Well, let's see what's happening in our world. Or nothing. the fake events that they're trying no, to... No, there's nothing, there's nothing happening. Uh, there's, 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 yeah, yeah, here we go. Gymnastics doctor abused her. Any woman that had... that Basically, by the way, if you want to do a sex abuse thing, mm -hmm. you want to go after somebody, now is the time. You've got about mm -hmm. a, uh, two weeks tops before people will start saying, oh yeah, that was uh, Harvey something out in Hollywood. You know, now is the time to well, do there's it. There's going to also be false pylon people as well. Sure. Wanting to pile on for the money. And I'm not saying that to be mean, but there will be people. But you got to have some proof. I mean, was did anybody who went after Tiger Woods, were, were any of those people fake? Uh, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, because he was pretty obvious. I mean, usually they kept the receipts. That you know, not not that he paid them, right. but he, like like they keep the receipts at the restaurant, or in the worst case scenarios, they kept his freaking voicemails that he left at their homes. You know, it's really hard to be a very very famous man or woman because anybody you have any interaction with that's nefarious, that's trying to trick you, that you think right. is a genuine good person, might get you into their clutches and then behind closed doors do really horrible things to you and then lie about you to the public. And famous. you might have no proof. And it doesn't just happen to famous people. It happens to real people as well. Famous people don't know who to trust. Right. It's, it's an old, old saying, uh, which is why you've got to kind of scope out your people, which is why famous people date other famous people, because that then you have sense. the whole mutual assured destruction. Right, exactly. And then you get something like Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, where she said he beat her and he says he didn't. And that's a whole other, whole other scenario. I almost said whole other can of worms, but are there really cans of worms? And why would you want a whole other one? I think one's more than enough. No. 
<laughs> kind of like letting the cat out of the bag. I'm just going, I don't why like the cat, that one either. Why is the cat, cat in the cat bag? In the bag? No, a cat shouldn't be in the bag. Yeah, ever. Unless they go in there on their own to play. <laughs> um, everyone's talking about JFK and... Uh, yeah, I know. We've pretty much sent the chat into all sorts of weird directions. There's song lyrics. George Clooney touched my safe area. No, that's funny. <laughs> well, this show is not hard flat earth proofs, evidence, or philosophy. It's never meant to be. It's called The Secret Show because it's sort of a, it, it's a funny name. It's not secret. You're here. We're here. It's just an opportunity to chill out, relax. And there's so much on YouTube when it comes to the flat earth, uh, that's very serious. And this is sort yeah. of an antidote to that. Um, it's not trying to diminish any of the serious stuff because we do talk about the serious stuff mixed in with these other things. In fact, all oh. of these things are serious. The fires are serious. The 5G is serious. A guy getting women on the casting couch is serious. They're not flat earth related, Absolutely. but yet everything's flat earth related. We're living on it. So why are worms in a can says, a Russian, oh, Chris Topher, which is spelled backwards and yes. weird. The, uh, they, because back in the old days, again, back in the olden times, when you went out to the fishing hole, <laughs> you would take a can of worms. Now you get the worms from either your local dirt or the bait shop. Bait shop. The bait wow. shop. And you'd fill up the, the can with worms and then you'd go down and put them on a hook and throw it is in the Is the bait shop better named animals we've collected to sell that were just living freely that now we're going to give you after you give us money and then they're going to die kind of yeah it's my it's favorite too long of a name though my favorite my favorite bait shop was the uh, the bait shop from the uh, simpsons where homer was like the master fisherman in that oh, no. where he went after the the giant catfish was uh, it like called master baiter no, no, but the guys in the shop were like the quintessential Americana 1930s. Like they'd spend their lives in this freaking bait shop. And like the head guys, like, you know, Homer asked a question. If you ask me, most folks do. <laughs> it's like, oh my God. And he described Homer later. It's like, you know, Homer Simpson was his name. Red hair, <laughs> red as the, the fires of hell. You know type of thing you know real what flowery. is it with redheads and the they don't have any soul when did that thing i mean i understand that's that, british that's british but why why did that even start i don't know it never even carried over here americans don't care we don't really call redheads ginger you something something in the religious side uh again a simpsons reference you know where ned flanders son had red hair and mm -hmm. he actually called him out on it says, i wish you didn't have the devil's red hair devil red and Red-headed stepchild is another one. Right, red-headed stepchild. Oh, yeah. I mean, well, the fact that, again, ginger, mm -hmm. which, again, another thing that completely blew by me, I did not, how I did not even get the fact that Ginger Grant was named Ginger Grant because she was a redhead. Because do we don't call, we call them Grant redheads. Is. Who's Ginger Grant? Gilligan's Island. Oh, Tina Louise. Name was Grant. I never yeah. knew that. Like Cary Grant? Of yeah. course. Yeah, Ginger, Ginger Grant. Yes. But but in, in my defense, that is because the very first season of Ginger Wow. You Ginger's Island <laughs> of Gilligan's Island black and white. was in black and white. Yes. So you didn't know her hair was red. So did you like Ginger better in Gilligan's Island or Marianne? Oh come on. It wasn't even close. Uh I'm gonna bet you like Ginger better. Oh uh, yes. Are you but kidding? Most men like Marianne better. <laughs> I have no idea what they're thinking. Because she's more like the girl next door in natural. Yeah, no. It, it, Ginger, I'm sorry, Teen Louise played Marilyn Monroe better than Marilyn sometimes. Yeah, exactly. I like Ginger was, the best was a myself. Fantastic character. Yeah, exactly. Well, I was born a redhead and I will die a redhead. Due to die. <laughs> or henna, as the case may be. Born to die. <laughs> Funny, funny. Um, let's see. Oh, good Lord. What see what you did now. Yeah. Chat room, Ginger or Marianne. Here we go. <laughs> let's see. Well, redheads are rare. I think it's- Watch, wait, How many seconds percent. before somebody says Mrs. Howell? Ready? Everyone's saying Ginger, Mrs. Howell. <laughs> okay, so on Three's oh. Company, the house, the, the, the landlord wife, the wife of the landlord in the TV show, Three's Company in the 70s. Right. With John Ritter, Suzanne Summers, and this brunette, yep, yep, yep. I her name. Mrs. whatever her name was was kind of like the Mrs. Mrs. Roper. Mrs. Roper was Mrs. I like I like Mrs. Howell, only not as uppity. Mrs. Howell is very highbrow. 
Yes. Very country club on a Sunday afternoon. Actually, Mrs. Howell reminded me of my dad's mo uh, mom, my grandmother. Mrs. Roper much. wore a lot of moo-moos. Yes, she certainly did. Yes. Whew. Wow. So I think this we've covered pretty <laughs> much. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Uh, I'm doing a show called The Secret Hangout, which is tomorrow, which is a panel show. I did one last week, and it's really fun. I hadn't done them for a while, and now I'm back to doing them again, which is a collection of varying people, flat earth and non-flat earth, get together and talk about whatever we want to talk about. But we can discuss more topics like we just were doing, but more in-depth, like the fires. Uh, are they natural or unnatural? I'm thinking this is microwave thing happening, but we're going to get people who know a little more on tomorrow to talk about all of this and flat earth and whatever. Some of the people I've invited who may come, it all depends on their schedule, D-I-T-R-H and Rob Skiba and the Hori Sheet Show and Nathan Oakley and Martin Leakey and uh, Mark Zulu One. And I've asked Dean Marble. I've asked Synthetic Dread. Um, I've asked a bunch of people that I should remember to name right now, be here in love Zoe, I think I said, um, anyway, I've asked a bunch of people, we'll see who shows and that should be fun. So that's tomorrow at 6 PM Eastern time, the secret hangout. And I hope that you'll, you'll join me for that. Yeah. Do you have anything else to report? Uh, yes. I'm going to respond to Bill Keith. It is possible that OJ didn't do it. Mm -hmm. It was actually OJ's son and he was covering for him because OJ's son had a future, and OJ was already retired. So, very possible. Very true. And if so, even if murder is horrendous, um, covering for your son who did it is sort of noble in a way, if indeed that's true. Yeah, I am sure. Why not? And go to jail, do time for your. But, the th but he was in a weird position because of the Rodney King incident, which had happened earlier. Yes. OJ could not be convicted. He could not be convicted. Because if he was, the, the money and property damage would be too you extensive. You think those fires are bad news in <laughs> California. <laughs> yeah, convict OJ or murder. See what happens. I mean, Rodney King was, con was uh, he wasn't convicted. The cops were let off. And they caused, I think, $5 billion worth of damage back in the early 90s. Mm. Um, considering that see. shit. Oh, and Chris Topher, who we mentioned earlier, is in the chat and who says, I think, they said OJ called him up to confess and OJ went to the scene. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. um, Chris Topher does art and made a, an art piece that is really cool. I'm going to use it for the thumbnail for tomorrow's Secret Hangout show. So cool. Let's see, and I'll credit Chris Topher in there. Um, let's see. Da, da, da. <laughs> Orthofepi Orientis says the only thing flat earthers have to fear is fear itself. Frank Bocciccio says, let's not get ourselves. Walk is right one flat earth hits our world will be changed. Although I don't quite, that was written a little weird. I understand what he's saying, that, that flat earth, the more we head toward more knowing about it, our world will never be the same. And isn't right. it true? Our personal worlds, everybody in this chat watching at a later date, you and I, our world is not the same as it was before in 2014 my life what i think about what i do compared to today 2017 whole different thing and when right. you go into a normal place to do a normal thing like grocery shopping or you go to a party or out to dinner with friends who aren't involved in this it's really hard you have to bite your tongue when they're talking yeah. about something and and you feel like you don't belong and you don't want to belong. That's the thing. They're talking about things that have, you know, are fake or phony, staged, um, lies. You know, they're being tricked. You know, they're being mind manipulated. Um, and it's it's almost like we've got to wake people up just so we can have friends. <laughs> yeah. Let's see what else is going on. Uh, David is here from All People, Free People. Hello, YouTube. Um, all is Brittany says directed energy weapon. That's what they're saying. We said it about 9 11 with Dr. Judy Wood, and they're saying that about the fires. But we'll get into that a little bit more tomorrow on the show. Um, let's see. Um, what else? Let's see. Oh, Andreas Design is asking what time tomorrow? 6 p.m. Eastern, which is 11 p.m. GMT or British summertime. I think that's BST. Nathan will correct me if I'm wrong. 
So, <clears throat> excuse me. And um, one last time, if anybody needs tickets to the conference and you don't have them, and if, or if you want to sell tickets to the conference, email me at msergeant23 at comcast.net and I will try to match you up. Tinker says, I saw my first Flat Earth bumper sticker the other day. That's pretty cool. That's a cool. moment. It's a moment. Uh, Jonathan Doherty says, one time I tried to buy lottery tickets and they said, oh, the satellites are down. He says, I just stood there and stared. I mean, what do you, what's your comeback? Yeah. And you, <laughs> you come back and say, there are no satellites, <laughs> but exactly. that might as well, you might as well be using the matrix line. There is no spoon. Yes, exactly. Uh, it's going to have the same effect. People are just going to look at you like you have a bug on your face. All people free people say is gentle nudges work best. It is true. You have to wait for your opening. You have to see with the people that are there if they have other things under their belt already, like the moon landing. Although there are people that you can reach who still think 9-11 was, you know, box cutters and Arabs and we landed on the moon uh, with technology that um, a paid, uh, in a pager. <laughs> right. Does anybody remember pagers? Pagers are like what fidget spinners are going to be in five years. People are going to say, what? My dad had a pager. Pagers. That's just a weird concept. Beep, 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 beep in movie theaters. Yeah. Funny. Um, let's see. Israel Adams says, one friend, the one friend I thought was awake turned out to be an agent. Wow. Hmm. Hmm. Um, Paul McKenzie says, or we could just indoctrinate them with flat earth music. We can't win this war without dirty tactics. Well, there's a band called Twin Serpent, and I'm now Facebook friends with them. And there are people who are putting messages into their music, not subliminal, just real messages about flat earth. There's a bunch of bands that are going to be performing at FEMA camp. Um, and that's the event IPS and uh, um, Issa Mahalski from Flat Earth Court. They're kind of with many other people putting together music and art coming up in Colorado, in Denver, uh, in November 2017. These bands have Flat Earth in their in their songs yeah. and, um, and other things that are involving awakening. And music is a way to get to people. But some say that that failed during the hippie movement when there were all these peace, love, and happiness songs. And what ended up happening was that faded out. And then what came in was the conservative, uh, you know, Reagan era, the eighties and, you know, everything being all about money and world destruction and the, uh, what did they call it? The, um, space, uh, space race. And then the, what were the, they said there were satellites in the sky that were weapons. They had a name for it. What was it called? Oh, 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 Gosh. well, not the star Wars program. Star That's, Wars program. Exactly. Uh, right. Yeah. Hey, by the way, la last little thing for me, I forgot because okay. uh, I didn't mention this on the show last night because I was kind of loopy. The thumbnail that I used for Strange World episode 124 is an aircraft carrier with the letters E equals MC squared in the center of it. Wow. And you're probably thinking, that's kind of weird, right? That is not Photoshop. That it was... Was it accidental? Uh, no, no, what? No, not well, accidental. Well, I mean, sometimes... No, no, no. What, in this case, it was the world's first nuclear-powered aircraft carrier. And so what they did was, because, you know, they, it's like, okay, what's the easiest way to tie <clears throat> that sort of atomic formula? So they, they took, they put the aircraft carrier in parade formation. They took all the planes from the lower decks and put them up on the top. And then they took a whole bunch of their officers, put them in their Navy whites and put them in that pattern on the deck. So where it says actually e equals MC squared. So if you if you take a look closely, it, that is not Photoshop. You guys want a copy of it? I'm more than happy to send it to you. I thought it was kind of interesting because nowadays people go, "Oh, it's a Photoshop thing." No, that was actually that took some doing. That took a whole bunch of guys standing on a deck in a windy Pacific Ocean, probably. Uh, Nathan Oakley and I are both chanting, "No nukes, no nukes!" at the same time. Nice. Um, we have a question from Bill Keith asking what FEMA stands for. The uh, it stands for stands for Flat Earth Music and Arts. So it's FEMA camp. And, Not to um, be confused with the Federal Emergency Management Association. Association? Um, um, and, and who thought of FEMA camp? Was it Martin Leakey? No, he thought of another one. I want to give credit to the what, agency. Was Mahal? Agency. Duh. Agency. Why would I think it was anything but agency? 
Um, we do have this chat on slow. There's a couple of comments. It's on slow mode because I, sometimes it spirals out of control if I leave it. And I was taught how to put it on slow mode recently because I couldn't figure it out and I finally figured it out. Um, so thanks to everybody who is here. Um, this is funny. Fans of Fane says, BS equals CGI times NASA equals 666. Uh, anyway. And all the numbers on a roulette table equal 666. Really? It's true. That's why I can't use a roulette table when I was describing the Earth early on when I was doing this. And what about records being 33 and a third? Yeah, 33.3 .3 RPM. Yes. Yeah. And maybe since music is used to program people, Maybe there's something to that. or And that stuck. That never changed. So it was right. 78s, and then it was taken down to 33 and a third. Right. And then 45s. I have 45s in the jukebox. 45s. But the 33 records, I mean, that's generally, that would be albums. And that's right. generally the music that if there was in the 60s and 70s programming used, and we've all heard about it, possibly that some of those songs aren't written by the people that claim to have written them. And we were programmed with the lyrics. Right. And that's... Uh, it's happening now, but it's not about war and peace now. Now it's about sexuality and um, not caring about anybody else except yourself. Although there are artists with amazing songs with deep and true lyrics. So you just have to look for them. If you listen to the radio, I was out today and a song was on. I don't know who it was and I don't care to know. But all it was singing over and over again was dance, dance, dance. All you need to do is dance, dance, dance. And I thought, yeah, that's what our culture is all about. The world is falling around our ears, but they're just telling us to Dah, just dance. It's fine. The, the epitome of that would be Britney Spears uh, dance until the world ends. Oh, if you wow. Wanted, you want to see a video? There's, or a there's, party the, there's the 1999. Well, in this case, like the yeah. world was literally, you know, apocalyptic around her and her and her 20 something friends are all, you know, just, doing the whole club thing underground. Very interesting. Yeah. Well, it's been fun. I am really happy that everyone came and enjoyed the show with us. And yeah. the live chat was popping with all sorts of cool people. And um, you and I will meet again next Wednesday, I guess, right? Next Wednesday, which will be two weeks until countdown. Yes, which is three weeks away from the Flat Earth Conference. If you have any tickets you want to sell or swap or trade or buy or whatever, yep, yep. definitely msargent23 at comcast.net. Let me know. And, and if you want to email something that you want read on The Secret Show, please send it to me at missstere, M-I-S-S-S-T-E-E-R-E -E -E at gmail.com. And make sure to let me know whether or not I can read your name because, you know, you might not want me to and I might do it anyway. All right, and that's it. Episode 195 is in the can. In, in the wrap. can, in the books. It's done. As it were. And until we meet again, Patricia Steer and Mark Sargent saying, keep it flat. Keep it flat, flatter.